29th. Ah, God has been so good and God has been so faithful and God has been just so just and we just want to thank God for all that he continues to do and we welcome each and every one of you this morning as we've come to give God some praise because this is the day that the Lord has made and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's good to see all of you this morning. I see my brother and my sister, and I see my fraternity president. I just thank God for all of you this morning and for all the members of Holy Trinity Amy Church. We come to you this morning. Holy Trinity Amy Church is located at 378 Mathis Ferry Road, where the Spirit of the Lord is in control. And we just thank God each and every day for what he's done and for what he continues to do and the great things that he is going to do. I wonder if you know that you serve an excellent God. You serve an awesome God. And for that, we've come to say, this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice in it. We're going to begin our service this morning. I, we call these services the water. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and the truth. Good morning, my fraternity brother. It's always good to see you. Always good to have you with us and always good to know that you're in the number, Brother Woods. At this time, we're going to go ahead and pray, play just a little bit of this. Good morning, my sister Annie. Hallelujah. can say that this morning. Good morning, Jesus. To be yes, sir. God, I thank you. I want to worship and Yes, sir. Go ahead and call somebody up. Go ahead and let somebody know. Oh, let somebody know that you're listening this morning. Oh, bless your God. Ah, 
Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for your redeeming power. We thank you for the power that moves and has its being. We thank you for allowing us another opportunity, another chance that we can come to hear your word and we can come and just be in your presence, God. And we know that it does not matter where we are, that we can turn any place into a sanctuary because God, where your spirit is, you reign. And God, we thank you this morning for those persons who have joined us by Facebook and by teleconference. God, we thank you this morning for allowing us to be in the number this morning. God, we just thank you for having your way. God, we beg you right now to use us for your glory. Take Arthur out of self and allow us to see the goodness of you through all that we go through today. God, we thank you in advance. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God, we pray for our sick and shuddering everywhere. We pray for our bereaved family. We pray for those families who are going through the trials and the crosses that they're going through. But God, we know that you're able. We know that you're willing. And we know that there's nothing too hard for you. So God, we lift you up right now. And to God be the glory. And God, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. God, we thank you. Mm. Bless your God. Bless your God. Bless your God. Change me, oh God. Mm. Make me more like you. Thank you, Jesus. thank God for all that he has done and all that he has said and we thank God for what he is doing in our lives this morning and we just pray that God will continue to bless us in the midst of some technical difficulties but we just thank God that God is allowing us to come before you this morning and if any person who may have been on the call line and may have been dropped and you know how to reach out to them you know they don't have Facebook you just ask that you just please go ahead and let them know that they can call in. The line is open that they may call in this morning, even though with some technical difficulties. Our scripture this morning is a very familiar passage of scripture and one that we just want you all to take to heart this morning. And it simply says the 23rd Psalms that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. That's it. The scripture Psalms 23 and 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And I wonder this morning, is the Lord your shepherd? 
If the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want it. The Lord is your shepherd. He will provide. And may the reading of God's word be a blessing to those of us who hear God's word and be led by God's word. So we just thank you once again for, for joining us. At this time, we're going to um, ask now that you allow yourselves to be a blessing if you choose to give in our offering. Uh, we pause at this time for your offering, John. It's offering time, and I believe, sister, my tech team will put up the cash app. My tech team will put up the cash app, and they'll let you know. I believe it's already printed up there, but if they want to put in the cash app, that you may want to give electronically. Some of us have already given, and we just ask that you do be a blessing to the ministry that God is doing. God is doing great things in our lives, and we just want to tell God thank you for all that God continues to do. And God does it not because we are worthy of it, but God does it because he allows us to do it. So, 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 so at this time, we're going to allow you to give your chance in our offering this morning. Amen. Allow your chance to give in the offering this morning. Mm. Bless your God. Bless your God. Bless your God. It's offering time. It's offering time. Go ahead and call somebody and tell them that the Holy Trinity is on and it's offering time. It's offering time. As you lift this offering, you can do it through the cash app. Amen. You can do it through the cash app. We invite you to come on. And let's just give God some praise this morning. It's offering time. And you ought to give cheerfully for God's love a cheerful giver. And we cannot do God's giving no matter how we try. Because the more we give, the more He gives to us. And so I beg of you this morning, come on, come on, give God some praise in our worship through our giving. So we will pause at this time that you may give as God has blessed you to give. Electronically, we ask that you give. Amen. Father, we thank you for the blessings that you've allowed us to share this morning. We thank you for those persons who have given. We thank you for those persons who have given cheerfully, God, because your word declares that you love a cheerful giver. And God, as we've asked now that you continue to bless us and that which we have given, we shall not miss. And that which we continue to trust you with, we're going to bring into the storehouse that they may be meet in your house. And you will prove us now that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. Bless us now that we may be blessed. Keep us so that we may be kept. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you and we thank God for your ability to give this morning. I want to thank those persons who have given me the hearts and the thumbs up to let me know that you are enjoying the service in a different setting and a different, it's, it's, it's all different for pastor, but guess what? God is still the same God and we just want to make a few announcements um, this morning and we're going to continue with our service. Just a few announcements. Um, prayers go out today to the family. Of, of the late brother um, Raymond Brown Sr., who was funeralized on yesterday. And we want to pr publicly thank the Reverend Johnny Robinson, who realized that I was at annual conference and he conducted the services for us. But we were in touch with the family the entire time. And we just thank God for your prayers. And we ask that you continue to pray for the family. Pray for Hattie, Sister Hattie Brown, Brown Sister. I'm Helen Brown, pray for the, the children. Just pray that God will continue to keep them. Let us remember that Sunday, September the 12th, is our Coins for Christ Sunday. Please let us remember to bring our coins. I know some of your coins are going to be too heavy to lift, but I promise you we'll have some, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have some, um, 
what do you call it? the dollies to bring in some of those 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 those, can't, those coins. It'll be so much. It'll be laid at the altar of Jesus. Amen. And so we ask that you, and if you do not have any coins, you just want to write a personal check for that $300, go ahead and do so. And we will be so grateful to, to have God, to be, we'll be so grateful to thank you for that. The Palmetto South Carolina Annual Conference, which I am at right now, will convene today. It will close today. It will end today. It will conclude today. Church school at 2 p.m., and the closing worship service is at 3.30. So we invite those persons, you've been watching it by Zoom, you've been watching it by, by, by Zoom, we've been watching it and we've been paying much attention to it and we just want to tell you thank you for that. We want to thank you so much for doing what you have been able to do and we just enjoy Jesus. Um, um, just enjoy Jesus about uh, the great things that he has done. I'm going to ask that we continue to lift up God in our prayers and continue to do those same things that we need to do. We want to say congratulations to, um, we want to say congratulations to Licentiate Anthony Taylor. He moved on to the second year of studies. Hallelujah. He passed the first year of studies as he's going through his ministerial orders and he's going through another year. So next year, this time, we will be saying reverend. Amen. All you've got to do, Brother Taylor, is stay faithful and God will hear and deliver. So we celebrate with Brother Taylor as God has elevated him from one class to the next class. And we're so grateful for that. Um, trustees, stewards, and class leaders. Um, please be prepared to meet with me this week after I return from annual conference. There's some things that we must do, and I need all of you in attendance. I will be sending that information out, or I will be sending it out through Sister Hope. So we just ask that you please, 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 please attend um, that we may do what we need to do. We will be back in person on next Sunday. So I look forward to seeing your faces. Amen. We just have to do it this way because of annual conference. But we will be back in session on next Sunday. So face to face. So I look forward to seeing your faces and doing the wonderful things with you that God has allowed us to do during this time. Wednesday, I want you to mark this on your calendar for me, please. Mark this on your calendar. Wednesday, September 1st is our day of prayer for Holy Trinity AME Church. Please mark that on your calendar. Wednesday, September 1st is our day of prayer for Holy Trinity. Share this with your friends. Share this with your family members. Participate in it. Pastor, what are we going to do? I want you to pray every hour. Every hour. If you can't get it right on the hour, pray from the moment you wake up. From the moment you wake up, every hour every hour on the hour. And if you can't get it exactly on the hour, get as close to the hour as you can. Whisper a prayer. You don't have to be long. Just whisper a prayer. And then we will be praying up until Bible study at 630. So from the moment you rise on Sunday morning, I need you. I mean, Wednesday morning, September the 1st, I need you. This will be our day of prayer for Holy Trinity. And I need you praying on the hour. Amen. Every hour throughout the day until we meet at 630 for our Bible study. And I promise you, you will see a difference in your life. You will see a difference in what God is about to do. Remember, Sunday is our regular communion Sunday. And if you're not in person yet, you can come on by. I tell you, you can come on. Um, but if you're not in person yet, please, you can get your consecrated communion on Saturday at the church while our missionary society will do their bread ministry distribution from 1230 until 2 p.m. If you are in person, you can get it on Sunday morning when you arrive. So we say to you, to God be the glory for the great things he has done. So let us remember that and let us be faithful to that. And let us do what God has allowed us to do. Those are our announcements for today. But I want to remind you, um, let us be remembered that September the 1st, September the 1st, um, September the 1st, we will be the day of prayer for Holy Trinity. And we will be praying on the hour all day long. Mark that on your calendars until we meet 
at Bible study at 6.30. Amen. Can you tell somebody it's time for the word? Can you tell somebody it's time for the word? Yeah, it's word time. 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 Amen. Amen. It's word time. It's word time. And uh, let's get ready to hear the word. Amen. 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 God's going to bless you. We're going to play just a little bit of this. And I trust and pray that you will be blessed as a result of you hearing this. And then we're going to come with the word. Amen. We got somebody, we got somebody. Come on. Y'all look dead on me this morning. Come on, come on. Let's sing some praises up. Come on. Come on, let's get excited. Let's have some trip. Come on. Come on, let's get excited. Let's have a good time. In the name of the Lord. Come on. Come on. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. You need to call and let somebody else know. Opportunity, this privilege, and this chance. God, we come not of ourselves. God, we come thanking you for what you have done and what you are about to do in this service. God, I just want to thank you for how you blessed us, how you kept us, and I thank you for your prayers. And God, I just ask now that you take me out of self and allow your Holy Spirit to dwell within me. Father God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. 
Amen. I want to thank you before I go any further. I want to thank you for your participation. For those who prayed, those who came out on, 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 on Wednesday, on Friday night, as God used us. And we want to thank you. It's on my Facebook page, the entire service. It's on Holy Trinity's Facebook page. So if you want to see how God used us, and we just give God the credit, we give God the praise, we give God the honor, because God truly used us, and it was a blessed service as a result of it. So I just thank God for that, and I just thank God for being God and all that God has allowed us to do, because he is a good God. And because of that, we tell God, thank you. Uh, look with me this morning for the next for the next few moments, for the next few moments, and I know that you're praying with me. Um, look with me to two passages of scriptures, two passages of scripture. The first scripture that we're going to look at this morning, and my tech team will put it up, is Job chapter 13, verse 15. Job chapter 13, verses 15. Job chapter 13, verse 15 says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. Job 13 and 15 says, Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. And then our second passage of scripture comes from Job 14:14. 14, 14. Our second passage of scripture comes from Job chapter 14 verse 14. And you will find these words. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change come. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time, will I wait till my change come? We're going to use for a subject this morning, if you pray with me just for a little while, God is still good. God is still good. I know that people are experiencing so many things in life that is difficult to deal with at this time in their lives. It seems like uh, the, every time you get one thing right, it seems like something else seems to go wrong. You are We are dealing with sicknesses and deaths and trials and family members and financial situations and separation anxieties and quarantines. And we're dealing with, with, with health issues and health complaints and ups and some downs and some ins and some outs. We're dealing with a government that would put money before they put the safety of children. And it's, it's, it's not from the top. We got to stop in the middle on this one. Amen, somebody. And we're, we're living in some, some, some trying times. We're living in some trying times, but I can still come to tell you this morning, God is still good. I know that there are times in your life you've got to wonder, Lord, what have I done to make this race so hard to run? It seems that your good is being spoken of. It seems that the harder you try, the more folks dislike you. It seems like sometimes you want to give up on this journey. It seems like sometimes your race is not being ran well, but I've come to tell you that God is still good. Even though you had surgery, God has been so good that he delivered you through the surgery. Even though you might have had an experiences with a bad health condition, God is still healing you and God is still delivering you. And I want you to know this morning that God is still good. And some of us are dealing with family issues and we're dealing with parents getting older and we're dealing with children who are not understanding that which you've taught them. But I've come to tell you, if you stay on your knees, God will stand up the situation. You didn't hear me. If you stay on your knees, God will stand up the situation. And I know there are some folks who your own parents have told you you couldn't make it. Your, your own family have told you you couldn't make it. Your, your own friends told you you couldn't
didn't make it. But when you stepped out on faith, when you stepped out on the fact that God said you can ask for what you will and it shall be done. And let me tell you something. I want you to know God is still good that you cannot share your vision with everybody. You cannot share your plans with everybody. You cannot share what you plan to do with everybody. Sometimes you just got to take it to the Lord and leave it there. You got to take it to the Lord and trust God that God is going to turn some things around. And I'm waiting on God to not only turn some things around, but I'm waiting on God to turn some people around. There are some wicked people in this world. There are some people who are trying in this world. There are people who are just setting out to destroy God's people. But I've come to tell you, if God is for us, who can be against us? So I want to remind you this morning that God is still good. We we, we look at Job. Job was a man that had everything. Y'all know the story. I don't need to go through and tell it. But Job was a man that had everything. He, 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 he had houses. He had mansions. He had cattle. He had money. Everything that Job had. But what Job didn't realize is that there was a conversation being t- taken and he was not involved. And let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. Sometimes I want to bless somebody this morning. Sometimes Times your name is being mentioned in a room and you don't even know about it. Oh, come on, somebody. Sometimes your name is being mentioned in a room and you don't know about it, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, but you got to know that God is still good. I wonder if I can get an amen out of somebody this morning. Well, Job, 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 Job lost everything and then and you got to realize when you read the story of Job. Job didn't lose these things over a period of time. Job didn't lose them after a couple of days, but every time, first, first of the, his children, his cattle were gone, and then somebody came and told him that his cattle was gone. Oh, God, I feel like preaching right about now in this hotel. Well, let, let me tell you, they told him that the cattle were gone, and then they, they, the, the children were at each other's house, and they were having a celebration, and they were having a good time, and that's why I tell you, watch your celebration. Now, come on, son. Somebody. And somebody ran to him and said, Job, all your children, all seven of your children are gone in the midst of a celebration. And, and Job still yet trusted God. Job still yet know that God was still God. And then uh, it says that, 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 that Job's health began to fail. Job's health began to get in a despair. Job had so many souls. He had the souls from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Now I'm going to park right there for a moment. Let me tell you something. That the Bible says that Job's friends didn't come to encourage him. They came to be nosy. So you got to be careful now who you let in your house. You got to be careful who you let in your business. You got to be careful who you tell your stuff to because not everybody's coming to cheer you on. Some people are coming to beat you down. Some people are coming to be nosy because the Bible says that his friends, I know they were nosy because the Bible says that his friends asked Job, Job, Tell us if you don't tell anybody else. Tell us what you did that's making this happen to you. Job said, I didn't do this. Job said, I even cursed the day that I was born. I don't curse my God, but I cursed the day that I was born because I didn't know that I would have to go through these trials. I didn't have to know that I was going through these situations. And all of us this morning, if we're honest with ourselves, we've been trapped in some situations. We say, Lord, I regret the day that this happened. We've been trapped in some health situations where we say, Lord, I regret the day that I feel as bad as I do. But you know, God is still good because he did not let you wait too late. And then, 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 then after the friends came to be nosy and after everything he had was gone, the woman that he loved, oh God, I feel like preaching. The woman that he loved, she turned around and she said, Job, you ought to curse your God and die. Look how you look. Your money's gone. Your children's gone. The servants are gone. Job, I didn't marry you like this. I married a man with a whole lot of stuff. You ought to just curse your God and die. And Job looked at the woman and Job said, woman, you sound foolish. You don't sound like the woman I married. You don't sound like the woman I wanted to spend my life with. But Job said, I refuse to curse God. I refuse to tell God it's his fault, but I'm going to wait until my change come. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And if anybody can say, though he slay me, 
yet will I trust him. God is still good. You're on the right track. Sickness have come, but you got to trust him. Trials have come, but you got to trust him. Storms may come in your life, but you got to trust him. Highways and byways may be crowded, but you got to trust God. You got to ask God to that vision that God has been giving you. It's time to give birth to it. And let me tell you this, my brothers and sisters, the reason why some of us are being blocked with our blessing is because we are holding on to stuff we need to get rid of. Mm, I'll let that one sing with you. The reason why some of us are being blocked with our blessing is because we are holding on to things we have no right holding on to. As good as God is, God still has given us some directions. God has still said, man that is born of a woman ain't got about a few days. And we got to realize we got to be able to do those things that God has said. We're not waiting on God because we're attaching ourselves to people who don't need to be attached to us. We are holding on to stuff that we need to let go. We're grieving in situations where we should be rejoicing. You got to realize that in order for God to do some things for you, you got to do some things for God because God said where praises go up, blessings shall come down. And that's how I know that God is still good. Preacher, can you tell me something else? Well, I'm just going to give you three reasons. God is still good. There's many more, but I'm going to give you three. First of all, God is good because it could have been worse. Mm, I don't care how bad your situation is. It could be worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be sick, but you could have been dead. Uh-huh. Come on, somebody. Yeah, come on, somebody. You might only have one meal to eat, but you could you, you could not have had any food at all. Come on, somebody. You you might have aches and pains in your bodies, but guess what? You could be lying in a coma this morning. So I don't want you to look at how bad it is. I want you to look that in spite of what your situation is, God is still good because, yes, God has kept you in the midst of it all. And God is really having you to realize as bad as it is, it could be worse. But by the grace of God, God has kept you. By the mercies of God, God has kept you. By the safety of God, God has kept you. And I want you to know that what God is about to do in your life is going to blow your mind. Some of you don't realize that God is about to do a shift in your life. God is about to do a change in your life. But you got to trust God enough to know that it could be worse. Yeah, God, I'm flat on my back, but I won't be here long. I'm going to get up on my feet. God, I got aches and pains, but I won't feel them much longer because I'm so glad I'm here, God. God, God, somebody didn't even make it to 50. Somebody didn't even make it to 40. Somebody didn't even make it to 30. Somebody didn't even make it to 20. Somebody didn't even make it to 15. But God, you've given me all these years on this land and I want to tell you, thank you because God is still good and it could have been worse. Mm. Secondly, 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 God is still good because he brought you. I don't care what your bank account looks like. I don't care how good your health might be. Look at Job. I don't care how, 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 how fancy it might be. It was God who brought you. He brought you out of many situations. He's good because he brought you out of darkness in to the marvelous light. He brought you because when you didn't have anything, God gave you something. Oh, y'all don't feel me this morning. You, he, he's still good because you could have been out and down and depressed, but God kept you. And even in your depression, you didn't take your life. So you ought to say, God, you brought me. You brought me through my trials. You brought me through my situations. You brought me through my circumstances. You brought me in the midnight hour. You brought me when nobody saw I was crying. You brought me when my husband died, you brought me when my wife died, you brought me when my children died, you brought me when mother left me, you brought me in a bad situation, you brought me when I didn't have a friend in this world, you brought me when I went through my trials and my crosses, you brought me when I fell fat, flat on my face, God, you brought me and you didn't leave me, God, you brought me when I was at my lowest point in my life. And let me tell you something, if you've never been so low that you got to look up in order to 
see the ground. All you got to do is keep on living because all of us will have some good days, but all of us will have some bad days. And there are days we're going to be so low that we're going to wonder, Lord, how much longer? But I've come to tell you, even though you might be low, hang in there because God brought you. The same God that brought Abraham, the same God that brought Isaac, the same God that brought Jacob, the same God that brought your mother and your father, the same God, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, will bring you and me because he is a deliverer. He is a safekeeper. He is one who knows what you need. He is one who protects you. He is one who loves you enough to look beyond your faults, your filthy rags in his eyesight. But guess what? What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes, God brought you. God brought you from where you once were to where you are now. Some of you know you were cusses. Hallelujah. Just step on some toes. Some of you know that you were cusses. Some of you know that you were drinkers. Some of you know that you were all kinds of things. But look where God has brought you from. It's not about your past. It's about your future. It's about where God's going to take you because we all have a past. But guess what? If you trust God enough, God will make your future even better because the Bible says, I'm not making this stuff up. The Bible says that your ladder is going to be greater than your beginning. And that tells me that what was yesterday was yesterday. But what God has in store for me, it is for me. And my name is on it because God is still good. God is still good that he's going to open up businesses for people. God is still good that those who got businesses, God's going to spread it. God's going to be so good that he's going to turn that child around that you worry about night after night. God is so good that he's going to restore somebody's health. God is so good that he's going to send you some relief from the pain that you've been feeling. God is so good that when you think that your money is short, but your bills are long, God will supply all of your needs according to your riches and glory. God will bring you out. There is no secret what God can do because what he's done for others, he'll do for you. God will bring you out. God is still good. And he's good all the time. My third reason, and I'm about to take, take a break here, but let me tell you something. God is still good because he's keeping you. Mm -hmm. Some of you if the Holy Spirit did not convict you, you would have found yourselves behind bars. If the Holy Spirit had not kept you, you would have been dead. If the Holy Spirit did not redirect your path, you would have been turned upside down. But God is still good because he's keeping you. And I know I know some of you may not like it, but guess what? He's keeping you from your own self. Woo. Woo. I know that hit hard. He's keeping you from your own self. Because God knows. God knows. God knows what you're capable of. God knows what's on your mind. He knows it even before you think it. But God is keeping you. And when you learn that God will keep you, you'll be a better steward. And I came to tell you, Jesus is a way maker. I came to tell you that Jesus will walk with you when nobody else walks with you. Some of us know how it is to have hard times. Some of us have, knows what it is to be at our last. But didn't God bring us and God is still keeping us? Some of us look better now than we've ever done, been, been in our lives. Come on, somebody. Some of us look more better now than we've ever done before. Some of us have more than we've ever had before. Some of us are driving things better than we ever thought we could drive. Why? Because the Lord has 
has kept us. Some of our health has been restored because God has kept us. Some of us have been redeemed because God has kept us. Some of us are on the right path because God has kept us. Some of us are on the right track because God has kept us. Some of us are in the right places because God has kept us. Some of us are doing better than our own families expected because God has kept us. Some of us are determined to fight this battle and fight on because God has kept us. And if God has kept you, why don't you shout glory? God is still good. Yes, he is. And as I close with a story, the story said there was a mother who came to church every Sunday with the same dress on, the same outfit. She was screaming that God is still good. And every Sunday when the pastor would get up to sing with the same outfit, she would say, God is still good. Every Sunday with the same clothes on, she would get up and say, God is still good. Every Sunday she would do her dance and do her shout. She would say, God is still good. And she would just couldn't hold her peace because she would say that God is still good. They, they couldn't figure out why she was doing this, but she would keep saying that God is still good. God is still good. God is still good. Every song that the choir sang, she would say, God is good. So one Sunday, a bold and ungrateful Christian came to her and said, Ma'am, can you tell me why is it that you're praising God the way you do every Sunday? And you're wearing the same dress. You're wearing the same shoes. You're wearing the same hat. But yet still, you get up Sunday after Sunday. You think I don't see you, but you catch the bus and you get off right about a block away from the church. And you you, you still keep saying God is good. How is it that your God is so good and you only have one outfit to wear? The lady said to her, let me tell you something, ma'am. Let me tell you something. Oh, I feel like preaching this one. He said, she said, let me tell you something. You are looking at the outside. Uh huh. You are looking at the outside, but my praise is coming from a different place. My praise is coming from the inside. And I say that the Lord is still good. She said, first of all, because I'm one in the number. Can I get a witness? I, 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 I can say, praise the Lord. That's why I tell God is still good. I say, God is still good because I got food on my table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still tell God it's still good because you see me catching the bus, but guess what? I'm able to walk. Uh, I got the activities of my limbs. Uh, she said, I tell God it's still good because I'm in my right mind. I tell God it's still good because some friends that I had are dead and gone, but I'm still here to give God some praise. I tell God it's good because I got a place that I can call home. It's not just a house. It's a home. She says, I got to give God the praise because right now I got a part-time job, but I know God's going to turn it into a full-time job. I, I praise him not because what I'm wearing. I don't praise him because of these physical things. I praise him because what I know God's about to do. I praise him from the inside. And that's why somebody says something on the inside is working on the outside and it brought a change in my life. Can I get a witness to morning. Won't you know God will do it? God will turn things around. God will fix things for you. God will make a way out of no way for you. God will have you to realize he'll brought you. He'll bring you out of bad situation. God will take care of you. God is still good. Regardless what you're going through, hold on this morning because God is still good. Regardless what they're saying about you, God is still good. Regardless what the doctor says, God is still good. Regardless of what it seems like, God is still good. Even though you drink your tears for water, God is
is still good. Even though sometimes you got to go by yourself, God is still good. Even though sometimes you got to wonder how much more can I endure, but God is still good. Because when I look back over my life and when I think things over, yes, I got to tell God, thank you, because God is still good. God brought us out of mighty long way. God brought us as a race of people. God brought us as a nation. God brought us as a country. God brought us as a world. You don't know my story. So stop getting angry when I get up and give God my praise. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what's about to happen in my life. So why I have a chance, I'm going to give God the glory. I'm going to give God the praise because God is still good. I may not be in a situation that I want to be, but let me tell you something, Amanda, your current situation is not your final destination. God is just putting you there just to test you, just to see if he can trust you. But I come to tell you this morning, God will make a way because God is still good. He's a changing God. He changes. No, 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 no. He does not change, but he changes situation. He changes circumstances. I've seen people who didn't want to speak to me. They're now coming to ask me questions. Don't tell me God is not able. God will take care of you because God is still good. And I'll tell you something as I close my sermon. I've been young and now I'm a little older and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. That's because God is still a good God. God is still good. He woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. Gave you another chance. And I don't know if you realize it. Due to things that's happened in the past. Didn't have to do it, but he did. And you ought to be telling God thank you. You ought to be telling God, God, I thank you. You ought to be telling God, God, I love you. But it's because the past has left You ought to be telling God, God, you saved me. You ought to be telling God, God, you delivered me. You ought to be telling God, God, you brought me. God, you ought to be telling God, I thank you that you didn't let me die in the midst of my sins. That's right, that's right, that's right. Deliver me. You ought to tell him thank you. Cause all I seem to do God is still a good God. That took care of your parents is taking care of you. There's somebody right now I can feel in my spirit. You want to give up because what people say. You want to give up because what people are talking about you. But guess what? They're only going to talk about you for 72 hours. Then they're going to move on to somebody else. Is still good. Despite what yesterday seemed like, this is a new day. God is still good. God is still a healer. Jehovah Rapha. He's still a deliverer. Jehovah Jireh. He's still a provider. Jehovah Nisi. Send it to you this morning. Cause all I see to do is touch your heart today and you want to join this ministry. Put it in the chat. And you can always give me a call at 843 I say, Lord, I want to give my life past. I want to give my life over to the Lord. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I've been tired long enough. God rest I want you to know God myself. is still good. Mama's gone. 
daddy's door. Just repeat after me. I guess that God bless the child. That's God is in the Let the Lord know. Just say, He's a keeper. He wants to resolve. He's a keeper. He's a keeper if you want to be careful. We tell Turn God our Father, I thank you. I thank you for a blessed moment. I thank you for a blessed Amen. word this morning. Amen. I thank you for keeping me. I thank you for watching over Speaking me. For, all of you starting here, starting for most here, of all, God, I want to thank you for you. God, I trust and pray that what I've done has made a difference. In the life of your people. Really? Now sing it for me, Leandria. God keep me because I want to be careful. Bless me because I want to be blessed. God touch everybody on the line this morning. God send a fresh anointing. Send a fresh anointing. Oh God. I don't like calling our neighbors. Just the whole watch out. Just the gamble. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. God is about to do a shift right now. God's about to do a shift right now. God's about to do a shift right now. Woo! God, I thank you. Woo! 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 God, I thank you. Don't let anybody tell you differently. God, this is our prayer. Amen. Don't let anybody tell you differently. God is still good. You may not have all you want. You may not be where you like to be. You may even not be as joyful as you are. But you're better off than a whole lot of other people. And I want you to take what God has given you and use it for his glory. Use it for his glory. Use it for his glory. I'm trying to stop, I'm trying to stop. In your presence, Lord. I'm trying to stop, I'm trying to stop, Bob. I'm trying to stop, With Sister Deborah. I'm trying. Open world. I'm trying to stop, I'm trying to stop, I'm trying to stop. And I just when I think of the goodness of With Jesus and all hands. he's done for me, God is still good. And With open hearts. All of us have been in situations we that we are ashamed of, but God has kept us. Something that will make you desire to just keep on serving God. And I want you to know, I want you to know personally, I want you to know personally, God 
is still a good God. And he would not have brought you to it if he couldn't take you through it. Donna, Tiffany, Antoinette, God wants to use you. God wants to use you. But you gotta surrender totally. Lady Holmes and I love you. We give God the highest praise. In Holy Trinity, we'll see you next Sunday. We'll see you Wednesday night. We know once the appointments are ready today, we'll be back right where God wants us to be. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. God is still good. We're going to let you go on this song. And if you want to shout, may the peace of God rule and abide with us now, henceforth and forevermore. In Jesus' name, God bless you.